Thank you for being here. Thank you for clicking on this video. I hope that you're here because you're expecting something in the mail and want to find out how you can do right by what's coming soon. Either way, exciting times ahead. Woohoo! Holiday wish lists being prepared? If not, I'm asking you, why not? But if you're anything like me, you might already be way ahead of the game and you want to avoid the holiday rush purchases, you know, get away from the crowds and your pre-holiday ordering orchids. <laughs> Either way, I hope that you have something coming in the mail, even if it is a voucher that you can use ahead of time. For that reason, I'm putting out this video so that you and your newcomers will have the best start in your relationship right from the get-go. As the new orchid shopping begins, and possibly you have some friends that know that you love orchids, and surprise, a box appears at your doorstep, <laughs> you weren't even expecting it. Anyway, this video will be helpful for you to understand what the benefits are in giving your orchids straight out of the box a welcome cocktail of CalMag and seaweed, or even if you treated yourself to new orchids locally, or you know, during Thanksgiving, somebody brought you an orchid. We must not forget those that come into our homes, into our collection, just because they were acquired locally, because the same principles apply. All right, let's narrow this down and just say any new orchid that comes into your collection, no matter the journey. Shipping is, of course, more stressful than local purchases because the orchids are enclosed in a dark space and temperature variables are unknown. While many online orders do not happen during the coldest months of the year, some nurseries do not take that season into consideration, opting for a heat pack, and then cross your fingers that there are no delays throughout the shipping process. But not just during the coldest months of the year. If anything untoward were to happen, like inclement weather, which would interrupt a timely delivery of your orchids during the winter, they will be in trouble as well as during the height of summer. Never mind looking at the weather forecast prior to placing your order. That may all work out well, but what about a strike? So, whatever means you use to get new orchids, they are under a tremendous amount of stress. And just like with us who travel a lot, once we arrive at our destination, it is wonderful to have a refreshment as a pick-me-up. Same with orchids. While we can chuck down a cool one and it revitalizes us pretty much instantly, the signs that your orchids are revitalized take a lot longer because of their slow metabolism. But trust and believe, they are chugging down and absorbing the CalMag and seaweed like there is no tomorrow, and just like Asterix with his magic potion, the components are doing their job instantly, even though we cannot see it happening. So why this mixture and what does it do? Well, let's start with calcium. Calcium does the same for orcas just as it does for humans. Well, for our inner structure, it strengthens our bones, maintains our bones health. But for our orchids, the calcium is there to help build strong cell walls. That is their structure. If the transport stress was too much, we will see new growth struggle and sometimes blacken at the tip, which can be mistaken for black rot. And then we place unwarranted blame on the nursery that they packed the orchids wrongly, that it may have been damp, and for that reason we think we have an orchid with rot. Then we contact them, unhappy with the purchase, and usually the nursery will take responsibility and we get a replacement, seeing as they are none the wiser, only having our proof images to go on. Now, I'm not saying that that can't happen, but it's not always the case. It may not come out of the box with anything funky looking, but within a couple of weeks, blackening will appear and you will probably side-eye the nursery. So, take into consideration that the orchid has been under stress. The new growth may not have enough support in its structure to continue growing, so the orchid may abort that growth, opting to conserve energy for long-term survival. And on top of that, we never know when the orchid got its last dose of calcium while still with the cellar. Usually, orchids arrive bone dry, meaning even before shipping, that pot was dry. So, calcium being an immobile nutrient will help support the stress the orchid finds itself in and support the new growth, preempting any decline. And what about magnesium? Well, <laughs> after not having seen the light in the case of online orders, 
for days, which is the best case scenario, magnesium will be so welcome to get into their system because it is required to produce chlorophyll, which in turn is used in the photosynthesis as well as other metabolic processes. Magnesium, as opposed to calcium, is a mobile nutrient, so the orchid can and will pull it from older structures if it feels the need to do so. If we do not have magnesium in the welcome cocktail, it is not as dramatic as if we omitted calcium. But why even go there when there are products on the market that have CalMag mixed together? And why even risk having the orchid needing to draw from its reserves, in turn making those weaker? Best to have the magnesium in the mix straight away so that none of the structures lose their strength and continue to function 100% as the support for which they are there for. Now, next question you may be asking yourself is, can I mix up Epsom salts and calcium nitrate to make my CalMag solution? And the answer, of course, is yes if that is what you prefer to do. However, be super careful with the concentration and PPM levels, which I will get to. Also, it is a lot more tedious to do that than take an already made product off the shelf that has the two elements mixed as a CalMag supplement. Personally, I like to make my life easy. That is why I do not mix the separate components for a CalMag soap. The convenience of having a product that has the components balanced, ready to use, works for me. Besides, what if I put too much of one into the water and then not enough of the other? For me, personally, that is too much of a headache. But you can definitely mix them up separately and then combine the two into one solution. Before I dive into the concentration and pH levels, if you have found this video informative so far, would you please take a moment to click like? Maybe afterwards share it around? And if you're not subscribed, please do so and let me know that you are here by leaving me a comment so that I can thank and welcome you. Know that there are more videos like this in my playlist called My Products Explained and many more of similar nature coming up in the future. But there are other ways you can support the channel by becoming an Orchid Ninja, for example, or using the thanks button right underneath the video, or checking out my merchandise store, which is easily accessible if you scroll down. You can see some items and then head into the main store for more his and her Orchid related products. I appreciate all the support and thank you so much in advance. Now, at what strength should the welcome cocktail be? I know what my preferences would be after a long journey, but I'm not an orchid. <laughs> okay, so from an orchid's perspective, my approach is as follows, and I will tell you why. I always dose CalMag and seaweed very conservatively, even ignoring the different sizes of the orchids that may come in a new order. While others may double or triple the concentration of what I am going to recommend, when it comes to new orchids, you have to keep in mind that the learning curve starts the moment you unwrap your newcomers and set them on the counter. I always tell myself, just because I have Catlias in my collection, it doesn't mean that I know a new Catlia because I've already got experience with Catlias. I approach a new orchid with the attitude of, I have to learn about you, I've got to get to know you. While I have my experience with Catlias, that experience applies exclusively to the orchids I have had for many years. So my approach is, I have zero experience with anything new coming in. While a large Catlia may tolerate 300 parts per million of CalMag upon arrival, it can also handle 60 parts per million. In my opinion, less is more, and we will get to repeat applications in a bit. I always, no matter the size of the orchid, prepare a welcome cocktail of 60 parts per million of CalMag, 40 parts per million seaweed, a total of 100 parts per million. So why am I so conservative? Well, several reasons. It gives me the opportunity to watch how the media responds, how quickly the orchid absorbs the moisture, how quickly the pot dries out, meaning how thirsty is the orchid, and is she that thirsty because she was bone dry or because she can handle more? And usually a new order of orchid arrives with pots and orchids of all different sizes. While I can make one batch very high and then dilute it as I fill my tubs for soaking, there's another aspect I take into consideration, which is media. And I will get into that as well. I usually soak my new orchids until the pot is completely saturated. 
that can take up to 10 minutes it can take up to an hour based on the time of year it can be overnight but that is very rare if the orchid arrives bare root and is very small i usually leave a smidge of the solution to wet the roots and then keep adding as it evaporates small bare root orchids are a lot more work and need to be checked at least two times per day at least depending on how warm it is where you grow your orchids so the batch i make is suitable for all the different pot sizes and i'm not risking too much of a good thing and then also saving myself a lot of time too much of a good thing meaning 300 parts per million in a small pot but what about the ph it is pointless to have a welcome cocktail if it doesn't hit the spot, right? <laughs> Imagine ordering a drink and you are parched and can't wait to feel the refreshing cold liquid quench your thirst and then it is tepid or there isn't enough ice in it. It's a total lead balloon effect. So making the welcome cocktail hit the spot for our new orchids, we want them to absorb the CalMag at optimal levels and as i'm reducing the workload on the different ppm concentration based on the size of the orchids that are new i make the effort to be specific and focus on the ph that i'm going to soak the orchids in usually when we place an order we already have a good idea of what the orchid will be potted up in and for that reason we can preempt a ph that will suit the media we believe to know will be in the pot what we don't know is how old that media may be so here is where i do make an extra effort to accommodate any new orchids in their different media were that to be the case so my time is consumed by the ph as opposed to diluting a higher concentration of the solution and i hope that makes sense you see if i get a box of orchids with lots of different media i have to consider a lot about the ph and i want them to absorb the calcium magnesium which means if an order comes in with five different orchids it is possible that some of them come bare root that would include you would see it was an inorganic media that is where i would ph at 6.8 which is the sweet spot for calcium and magnesium then in another pot i have an orchid that has arrived in only sphagnum moss i have no idea how old that sphagnum moss is nor honestly do i care my ph will be at 7.5 because whatever is going on in that pot the 7.5 will drop down to an adequate pH where even that orchid will receive the optimal absorption rate for calcium and magnesium. Another orchid comes in all bark, IPH at 7.0. And if I have a bark mix that also includes rock wool, for example, I also pH at 7.0. This way, whatever age the media in the pot could be the orchids will absorb the calmag and seaweed as we are giving them a soak the ph levels that would appear to be rather high will drop because of the possible acidity in the older median now of course you can go pot by pot and figure out the ph of every pot and ph accordingly however if you don't have the time to do all that then the values i just mentioned will hit the mark for calcium and magnesium absorption so after you've done this once and checked out your new kiddos is there a repeat application yes and no <laughs> repeat applications are definitely necessary for bare root orchids definitely and depending on how quickly they dry out between a soak then three soaks in total between drying out will suffice whereas potted up orchids will be fine with a single soak and then once the pots have dried out flush and care for them as per the genus's preferences while calma can be applied more frequently if that is what you choose to do after your initial welcome cocktail because you are incorporating the care of your new orchids to that of the orchids you already have i would not apply seaweed more than once a month again conservative because of the hormones in the seaweed and we don't want to risk creating a hormone imbalance remember that we need to take our time to get to know our new orchids and then there are the exceptions <laughs> gotta love this hobby the exception that poses itself in my head is what if it is the wrong time of year and then the wrong time of year for what for buying orchids 
or the wrong time of year for the orchid based on what phase it finds itself in. Dormant, is it resting, no active growth, etc. All right, let's clear that one up. Dormant and resting orchids need a little water even while they are in that state of their growth cycle. A little water meaning the amount of dew that outdoor growing would provide. Even though they don't require heavy watering, they don't stay bone dry for those months. The dew saturates debris and the roots absorb the nutrients from that decayed matter even if in minute doses. So, if you were to receive an orchid in that phase of its growth cycle, it isn't going to go without water and a little bit of CalMag for several months on end until it breaks dormancy. And you heard me just now say CalMag only. No seaweed in the case of receiving a new orchid that is dormant or resting because of the hormones in the seaweed, but you can give them only CalMag at the same dose as mentioned earlier. Now, if you are getting an orchid that is just coming out of the dormancy resting phase and it looks to be growing new growths or eyes are just in the process of swelling, then add the seaweed to supplement the growth hormones which the orchid is clearly mobilizing within itself. In the case of your orchids not being in active growth and that includes new root tips, then still give them a soak, including seaweed, because you're getting to know your new orchids and this is a kind of reset for them as well. Remember they also went through transportation shock and their active growth may be delayed because of the shock. However, you would not know that because the orchid isn't doing anything. This way, you can take the guessing game of is my orchid stalled out of the equation by giving those a soak as well and then watch and wait. Now, you may be saying, I have never soaked my orchids in CalMag and seaweed upon arrival, so what's the point other than what you've already talked about? And if you've come this far and have never done it, I appreciate your time. Thank you for being here. Well, I have no argument against that because I'm not in your environment. However, let me tell you one thing about this, and it is not proven. I'm not a scientist. I haven't done before and after results. You would need to have the exact orchid with the exact conditions, arriving at exactly the same time, and then wait maybe two or three years to see if there was a difference by treating them both separately. However, let me bring this thought to your attention. Their acclimating process will take a lot longer because the stress of relocating will impede any roots that were thinking of growing and they will stop growing. New growths will stall after a time seeing as it is interfering with the acclimating process and the orchids will sit and bide their time so to speak to conserve energy until they have figured out their whereabouts. Granted, you may be saying that you've never used this mixture in the past and your orchids were fine. And then I would have to ask you if you have vigorous hybrids in your new order, because some orchids are bred for vigor, stamina, and nothing should really phase them. However, what if there are multiple new growths and each of them are vying to grow out and the orchid is at the same time acclimating? Sometimes those new growths will grow smaller and you will rightly conclude that it is due to the transport stress. If you have never used a welcome cocktail, I would recommend you try out a good CalMag and seaweed soak and see just how much better they would do right out of the box and then make a comparison. I don't know about you, but I have seen orchids arrive with active growing root tips or even active new growths. And for the first three or four weeks, it would seem as though they progress. However, the root tips start to go back. The velamen starts to close over no matter what you've done. That is because it is that time frame where the orchid is reacting and responding to the transportation stress before it then activates and starts to continue to grow again. Let me know in the comments if you've ever noticed that yay, a new growth, and you can see it progressing three, four weeks in and then boom, it just stops. Same with active root tips. I would like to know if you've noticed that because I, in my climate, certainly have, even with my welcome cocktail. So what I just mentioned there is the subject of, even though the welcome cocktail was applied, the orchid started to stall for a considerable amount of time. And then you tell yourself you did the right thing. And then you can say, well, 
That was a pointless exercise. My orchid is stalled anyway. But it is possible that the orchid was already stalled at the nursery. It is not as if they sold you a dud. But other stressors made it stall even before it arrived in your collection. The welcome cocktail is a reset. It is for you to know what you gave your orchid when it arrived. And then you sit and watch, observe and get to know it. Know that orchids are slow growers, so even if the nursery may not be aware that an orchid is stalled based on how much volume they shift on the daily, wait it out and watch your orchid come around eventually. It can take a year, but know that it is not because you're doing anything wrong. If you give your orchid enough light, enough water and the occasional glog, of CalMag and seaweed. And I hope that this makes sense because it is unfortunate to be excited about a new growth and growing root tips and then we just repot and we have not allowed the orchid to acclimate. Everything stops. Everything may have stopped even if you hadn't repotted, but the stopping process is a reaction to the stressor of shipping or moving the orchid from where you purchased it locally to your home. It is normal and has nothing to do with what you're doing wrong. It just takes a little bit longer for that effect to kick in. And by that time, it's in your home and you may conclude that you've got yourself a dud. That is not the case. So I hope that this makes you all the more excited to welcome newcomers into your collection. The ordering is fun. The anticipation prior to arrival is exciting. Settling them in and getting to know your new kiddos is awesome. Why not give them the best start straight out of the box? And once again, a reminder, I have several more in-depth videos on the subject of supplementing, which you can find linked in the description under the title of My Products Explained, just in case you want to go in for a deep dive. And on top of all of that, a monologue can become a dialogue if you address any thoughts you may have had while listening in the comments, and I look forward to saying hi. <laughs> Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate your time. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition. As always, please stay safe. Take care. Bye. <laughs>